Hi guys, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. Today's tutorial is two tips that will make your workflow better, make your images better and kind of fine tune the workflow. So if you've watched my other video on my quick, efficient workflow process, here's two tricks that are really good and will help you create a better image. So I've got this picture of this pie build grebe that I took on Monday and it was a cloudy overcast morning and the bird was kind of far away so I just shot it right in the center of the lens there and I did that on purpose because I wanted it to be really sharp. I had to shoot at a pretty high ISO. Let's flip over to the library module and I'll show you. So I was at ISO 3200 with the 7D Mark II and so that's pretty high ISO for that camera just because it's an ASP-C sensor or a cropped sensor. How do I fix this image? How do I save it? Because it's kind of a cool image. It's got a little bit of color and stuff in his neck here. You can see his pie build and for a winter bird having the pie build is, is pretty good. So let's go to the develop module and I'm going to do a couple of things different as I go through the workflow. The first one is I'm going to change this from Adobe Standard to Adobe Landscape and watch what happens to the image. It really warms everything up. You can't do this all the time because it drastically adds color to the bird, but it's still believable in this instance. So I do that. I'm not going to use the dehaze filter, but sometimes I do. I go up here and I check on chromatic aberration to remove it and enable the lens profile. It didn't pick up my lens profile, so I'm going to go down here and pick Canon and it will show that I was shooting with the 600 f4 with the 1.4. So now I go up and I'm going to sharpen the bird a little bit. Actually, before I do that, because this actually is a noisy image, I'm going to do noise reduction on the whole image. And then I'm going to go up and do my sharpening mask. I'll do the sharpening mask. And remember, whatever's white gets sharpened. That, And then I'm going to bump up the sharpening a bunch on that. And let's look at it one to one. And that looks pretty good, really. That looks a lot better than I thought it would. Maybe I'll just sharpen the bird up a little bit more, make him nice and crisp. So I've got that. Then I'm going to continue up and I'm going to go into the tone curves. And I haven't spent a lot of time in my career as a bird photographer using the tone curve, but in the last couple of months I've been using it more and more. So I'm going to increase the um, light there and I'm going to decrease. I'm going to add a little bit of darkness there. So the top part lightens, the bottom part, well, if you push up it lightens, if you pull down it darkens it. That increases the overall tonal qualities to the image and so I like that. It kind of expands the dynamic range a little bit. But I don't need to add any clarity. I'm not going to add any vibrance. My histogram looks pretty good. I'm not clipping anything. I might take the shadows up just a little bit just to kind of lighten it up in the back, bird's back right there. So there we have it. Now I've got some obvious things to fix here. So I'm going to level this out and I'll just, I'll hit the angle here and I'll just draw this kind of along the bird here where the water line is. Then I'm going to crop it down a little bit. I'm going to pull, let's see, something like that. Give him plenty of room to move into, but I want to keep part of that, uh, part of the water. I don't want him smack dab in the middle though. Could lower them a little bit, something like that. And so now I have this completed image and, and it didn't take me very long, but by using the camera calibration down here and choosing camera landscape instead of the default Adobe, look what the difference there is, right? Adobe standard, which it changes to that. You could go in and you could do camera faithful That'll warm it up a little bit, but if you go in and do this landscape on a kind of a winter day, it adds a lot of nice warm tones to the image and that really helps that out. So use that camera calibration and then also use the tone curve and kind of, you know, increase your dynamic range a little bit. There we have it. There we have a nice little image there. If you're interested in doing bird photography workshops, join me over at my website, timboyerphotography.com. If you enjoy what I'm doing on my channel, please subscribe, share, and like. I really appreciate that. Remember, I post a tutorial every Wednesday, so I will see you next Wednesday. Thanks a lot. Bye.